Mumbai top cop accuses the Maharashtra Home Minister of Corruption, says Anil Deshmukh directed the suspended API Sachin Vaze to collect 100 crore rupees every month from bars and restaurants. The BJP goes to the jugular, demands Anil Deshmukh resign or be sacked. Rapid antigen testing to be done randomly without citizens' consent at crowded places in Mumbai as cases rise. If anyone refuses to get tested, they will be booked under the Epidemic Act. This as over 27,000 fresh COVID-19 cases are reported in a day in the state. The Maharashtra Minister Aditya Thakre also tests positive for the coronavirus. The US Secretary of Defense, General spoke with Indian ministers about human rights of minorities in India. He says it is an important conversation for partners to have. And in battleground Bengal, Prime Minister Modi attacks Mamta Banerjee's nephew, says nothing can happen in Bengal without going through Abhishek Banerjee. Mamta's nephew hits out with a point-by-point -point rebuttal. Hello and welcome the top story right now in an explosive twist. The sacked Mumbai top cop Parambir Singh has accused the Maharashtra Home Minister of corruption. The shunted police commissioner Parambir Singh replaced as Mumbai's police commissioner over reported lapses in the Mukesh Ambani security scare probe has written a letter to the chief minister accusing the Maharashtra Home Minister Anil Deshmukh of directing the suspended API Sachin Vaze to collect 100 crore rupees every month from bars and restaurants. Now, according to his letter, the sub-inspector Sachin Vaze, who was heading the crime intelligence unit of the crime branch, crime branch of the Mumbai police, was called by Anil Deshmukh to his official residence several times in the last few months and repeatedly instructed to assist in the collection of funds for the Honourable Home Minister. In February, the State Home Minister, in the presence of his personal secretary, told Vaze that he had a target to accumulate 100 crores in a month. The Home Minister, the letter goes on to say, has, as a regular practice, been repeatedly calling my officers and giving them instructions in respect of the course to be followed by them in the performance of their official duties. The Home Minister has been doing so by bypassing me and other superior officers of the police department to whom those respective police officers report to. The Honourable Home Minister has been instructing them to carry out official assignments and collection schemes, including financial transactions as per his instructions, based on his expectations and targets to collect money. He ends the letter by saying, I have been made a scapegoat to divert attention from the actual wrongdoers. Now, Anil Deshmukh has responded to the explosive letter by Paramvir Singh alleging that the former Mumbai police commissioner was levelling false allegations to save himself from further legal action. All right, let's go across to uh, Srinivasan Jain for more on this. So, Vasu, of course, the big question is who is going to be having uh, a good night's sleep among uh, the politicians of Maharashtra tonight? Anil Deshmukh responding there saying that uh, Paramvi Singh is uh, trying to save himself from further legal action. Any word from uh, Mr. Singh who has set uh, the cat among the pigeons with his letter to the chief minister? Well, Sarah, this is a huge political embarrassment uh, for the beleaguered Maharashtra uh, government, which has anyway been rocked by scandal after the emergence of serious questions over the role of uh, uh, the police inspector Vade in this entire Antela bomb scare. And now you have this letter. This is an unprecedented letter. Rarely uh, can one recall a sitting police commissioner writing a public letter making such serious allegations against the sitting home minister. Now, uh, as you pointed out, Anil Deshmukh has... Uh, rejected this. He has said that there is no basis in the allegations made by Parambi Singh. But the fact is that, number one, as many have been pointing out, it's highly unusual for a sitting officer like Parambi Singh to have made allegations if he didn't have some kind of material or evidence to back his claim. Uh, remember in his letter, he's not just simply making allegations about conversations that he had uh, with Vaze about his meetings uh, with Anil Deshmukh, where Anil Deshmukh asked him to collect 100 crores a month. 
Mr. Parambi Singh has also attached copies of SMSs or messages that he's exchanged with another police official who he says also met Anil Deshmukh and where Mr. Deshmukh allegedly made the same demands about raising a crores of rupees. And he's reproduced uh, that SMS exchange in his letter. Absolutely. Now, Singh himself uh, uh, is incommunicado. Uh, you know, sources close to him say that he has said whatever he had to say in the letter, which he has both emailed uh, to the chief minister as well as sent a physical copy. Uh, also, uh, sources saying that uh, the truth had to come out at some time and that he will speak at an appropriate time. Uh, but all of this, uh, Sarah, is going to make it extremely difficult for the Maharashtra government uh, to continue to back Anil Deshmukh. Yes, it is true that Mr. Deshmukh met Sharad Pawar in Delhi just a short uh, while ago uh, and, and appears to have got a clean fit because Mr. Pawar didn't say anything after that. Uh, but Parambi Singh said he had briefed Mr. Pawar as well uh, about all of this. Now with the emergence of this letter, uh, I think this does plunge uh, the, the coalition in Maharashtra into a serious crisis. And it does appear that the position of the Home Minister is going to be uh, extremely untenable. What call Udav Thakre takes? Uh, will he be consulting Mr. Pawar before taking the final decision? All that we'll have to wait and see. Uh, but this, as I said, is perhaps the most serious crisis that this, uh, uh, this is very, very politically fragile coalition has faced since it's come together. Vaso, we have just gotten uh, more of a reaction from Anil Deshmukh. He has put out a statement. Uh, uh, he says these are false allegations. He goes on to say that this is a conspiracy hatched by him, that is uh, Singh, Parambi Singh, to discredit me. He asks for proof. He says he should prove his allegations and goes on to say that uh, I am filing a defamation suit against them. And then he says that the chief minister should conduct an impartial inquiry. The question, of course, being raised is who will conduct this inquiry given the fact that the, the, uh, the so-called accused here or who these allegations have been made against is the home minister under, in, under which department an inquiry would be carried out. But uh, Vasu, uh, Anil Deshmukh saying he should prove his allegations. That is why uh, in this letter, as you point out, Paramveer Singh has clearly... Uh, transcribed uh, a, an exchange that he has had with one of an one officer uh, on the phone, I think on WhatsApp. So Parambir Singh seems to be uh, was prepared that he would be asked for proof. So he's taking this letter to the next level where it's no longer just a mere uh, allegation. Well, uh, look, Sarah, as I mentioned, uh, it's entirely uh, predictable that Mr. Deshmukh will have to come out with some kind of defense. Uh, designed to dismiss or discredit the allegations against him. And this is standard rhetoric. We've heard it before from politicians uh, when they face allegations of this nature. And of course, at some point, a formal inquiry will have to be constituted because the allegations are serious. If a sitting home minister is using the police force uh, to collect or to extort money uh, from uh, city establishments. But the fact is that this is now something which just goes beyond procedure. A letter of this nature, as I said, coming from a sitting police officer, is extremely unusual and wouldn't have been put out in the public domain had there not been some grain of evidence there, uh, which is why politically it will become very hard for the state government to continue uh, to, to continue to back Mr. Deshmukh, uh, to allow him to remain in office uh, in the light of this latest scandal, coming as it does on the back of the Antela scandal, now this. So while an inquiry and all that may certainly take place in the future, I think for now, politically, to get the heat off the state government, uh, they will have to act. Because remember, Sarah, that both the two key stakeholders if of the state government, the NCP and the Shiv Sena, are very much part of this whole scandal. Uh, Mr. Vase was, in fact, somebody who is a former Shiv Sena, uh, yes. who was rapidly elevated within the ranks to become the head of intelligence in the Mumbai police. On the other hand, Anil Deshmukh is an NCP uh, appointee, uh, very much... Uh, you know, with the blessings of the top NCP leadership, including Sharad Pawar. So both uh, uh, the key stakeholders in this scandal are uh, those linked to the two main alliance partners. And uh, therefore, uh, in order to ensure that they try to reduce the political fallout of this, uh, it, it seems highly unlikely that they will continue to back Mr. Deshmukh. We'll have to see, of course, how it plays out. But mm. this certainly, Sarah, gives the grist to the BJP 
uh, which has been on the warpath against the state government, looking for reasons uh, to call uh, for its, uh, I mean, not just the uh, sacking of Mr. Deshmukh, uh, but perhaps even now starting to raise questions about the viability of the state government, whether it can truly govern. So to ward off all of that, uh, you know, knowing the sort of pressures that are being brought on the <coughs> government, again, we'll have to see what political call uh, they make. But I suspect that Mr. Deshmukh's denials and rebuttals at this stage are unlikely to stand much ground. All right, Srinivas Anjay, and reporting there as uh, Maharashtra's politics takes a new turn and the BJP hammering away uh, right now. They have launched a massive offensive demanding Anil Deshmukh's removal. Paramjit Singh Zaji, you have a letter. हमारी मांग है कि गृहमंत्री जी ने तुरंत इस्तीफा देना चाहिए वो नहीं देते तो उनको मुख्यमंत्री जी ने हटाना चाहिए और इसकी निष्पक्ष जांच होनी चाहिए and all of this, of course, as the number of uh, COVID cases in the state of Maharashtra continue to rise every day. All right, the other big story, the U.S. Secretary of Defense, General Lloyd Austin, before leaving India, said he spoke with Indian cabinet ministers on the issue of human rights of minorities. The, UN's, the U.S. Defense Secretary's comments come days after the U.S. Senate Foreign Relations Committee wrote to the Secretary of Defense to raise concerns on India, and I'm quoting here, trending away from democratic values. Partner nations need to be able to discuss all issues, including human rights. An important message from Lloyd Austin, the U.S. Secretary of Defense, the first U.S. minister to come to India after yeah. the Biden administration came to power. Uh, do you share the concern expressed by the Senate Foreign Relations Committee chief that uh, India was trending away from democracy? You've heard President Biden say that uh, you know, human rights and, uh, and the rule of law is important to the United States of America. Uh, we always lead with our values, and, uh, you know, as a democracy, that's, that's pretty important to us. Uh, and again, India is a democratic country, and, and they, uh, you, you treasure your values as well. Lloyd Austin, who retired as a four-star U.S. general, also said the issue of human rights came up in his conversations in New Delhi. You know, I did have uh, a conversation with uh, other members of the cabinet uh, on, this, on this issue. And I think uh, partners need to be able to have those kinds of discussions. And, uh, and certainly, uh, you know, we're, uh, we, we feel comfortable in, in doing that. So. And you can have those discussions in a very meaningful way and still and, and make progress. Earlier in the day, Defense Minister Rajnath Singh said both sides were looking to extend the close strategic partnership that India and the U.S. enjoy, joint military exercises and information sharing. We are keen to work together to realize the full potential of the India-U.S. comprehensive global strategic partnership. Significantly, the U.S. has stated that they do not believe that India and China were on the verge of war in Ladakh. To my knowledge, uh, we've never uh, considered there, that uh, India and China were on the, on the threshold of war. And significantly for India, it appears the U.S. has so far not proceeded with plans to sanction New Delhi for acquiring Russian S-400 surface-to-air missiles. The strategic relationship between India and the United States has clearly evolved over the last decade plus. But the context now in the reference to human rights which has been made, the fact that the U.S. Secretary did speak with an Indian cabinet minister on the issue of human rights is also important and reflects some of the concerns which have been raised in the United States over the last one week. Vishnu Shom for NDTV. And finally, it is a no-holds-barred attack between the BJP and the TMC. The elections in West Bengal have been turned into a full-fledged war, with both sides arming themselves to the hilt with barbs. 
the wheelchair versus the juggernaut mamta banerji versus narendra modi she held three rallies through the day he addressed one in bengal all the barbs that flew were bitter and biting ek taraf desh nirantar सिंगल विंडो सिस्टम की तरफ बढ़ रहा है लेकिन पश्चिम बंगाल में एक अलग तरह का ही सिंगल विंडो सिस्टम बना दिया गया है बंगाल में सिंगल विंडो है पाइपो विंडो पश्चिम बंगाल में इस विंडो से गुजरे बिना कुछ नहीं हो सकता लोको लोको कोटी टकर मालिक हुए आज के तृणमूल के तोलाबाज बोलते कोटी कोटी टाका तोलाबाज बीजेपी पार्टी तो तोलाबाज पार्टी सारा पृथ्वी नहीं तृणमूल कॉग्रेस समर्थन करेक बनार्जी एंड दिलीप घोष अभिषेक रिटर्न द प्राइम मिनिस्टर फायर दिलीप घोष टू कॉन दीदी पंचाशी दिन जो पांच बचर है दिलीप घोष डे वज मेड बै प्रेज फ्रम हिज बस अनप्रेसिडेंटेड प्रेज मुझे गर्व है मेरी पार्टी के पास दिलीप घोष जैसे अध्यक्ष है और आज पूरे बंगाल में नई ऊर्जा भर रहे हैं द रेस्ट ऑफ द एक्सचेंजेस थ्रू द डे वर एनीथिंग बट स्पोर्टिंग एज न्यू बीज इन द बैटल आर लर्निंग फास्ट मनोज तिवारी बैटिंग फॉर तृणमूल एट शिवपुर यशदास गुप्ता फॉर बीजेपी एट चंडीतला फेम्ड फॉर प्लेइंग गैंगस्टर इन अ फिल्म नाउ ऑल शुक अप कोशिश यही कर रहा हूँ की स्ट्रेट बैट से खेलने का लेकिन कभी कभी सिचुएशन और सर्फेस जो आप कहते हैं इन क्रिकेटिंग टर्म्स थोड़ा अलग है डिफिकल्ट है चैलेंजिंग है मीन वाइल एट हाजरा मोड नियर ममता बैनर्जी होम अस्प्लैश ऑफ रेड द लेफ्ट हेज फील्डेड सेवरल यंग फेसेज दिस टाइम like oishi ghosh of jnu none of them are tainted none of them have has got any allegation of a single penny in their name none of them are leaders by virtue of being someone's nephew none of them are leaders by virtue of being someone's son or daughter the bengal battle kick off 27th march is all set to be a 33 day spectacle with a nail biting finish with sarav gupta and gd shankar monidipa banerji NDTV And that's news at the sun.